This is the closest I'll ever get to solving the Riemann hypothesis. We want to prove that the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 1 plus k to the s is at least zeta of s divided by 1 plus zeta of s, where zeta of s is this very famous Riemann zeta function, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the s. And I probably should say here s is bigger than 1. It's a real number here, so that this quantity is a real number. Um, oh, yeah, so also s has to be bigger than 1, so that this thing converges. OK, how on earth do we prove this? Let's dive in. The first thing I'm going to do is kind of prove a generalized version of this. And I call it a lemma, but actually it's, it's the bulk of the work here. Um, what I'm going to do is prove that the sum from k equals 1 to n of x k over 1 plus x k is at least the sum from k equals 1 to n of x k all over 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of x k, where x k is a sequence of non-negative real numbers. x k is at least 1, and x k is always at least 0 um, for this. OK, cool. How do we do this? Well, the proof is actually maybe what you'd expect the proof to be, um, because it's very easy to prove when n is 1. Because when n is 1, this sum here we can ignore, this sum we can ignore, and this sum we can ignore. And in fact, we have equality pretty clearly. And whenever something is easy to prove for n is 1, maybe induction is the way to go. And we're actually going to do that here. It's a relatively straightforward induction proof. So we're going to assume it's true for some number n, and now we're going to look at n plus 1. So the sum from k equals 1 to n plus 1 of xk over 1 plus xk, well, this thing here is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of xk plus 1, uh, divided, by 1 over, uh, divided by 1 plus xk plus the n plus 1 term. So x n plus 1 over 1 over x n plus 1, like so. OK, cool. Well, by assumption, this guy here is at least um, the sum from k, k equals 1 to n of xk over 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of xk. And then we've still got this term to, to add on at the end. So xn plus 1 over 1 plus xn plus 1. And now we're going to use the fact that each of these guys are non-negative. Well, how can we do that? Um, well, we can clearly see that this denominator here is smaller than if I put 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to n plus 1 of xk. In other words, I just added another term onto the bottom. And since everything is non-negative, that's only going to make the denominator bigger. And so that's going to cause the whole thing to become smaller. So this guy here is bigger than or equal to this guy here. Um, like so. So this guy is basically the same as this guy, but I've just made the denominator bigger, hence the quantity is smaller. And I'm going to do something similar here, xn plus 1 over 1 plus, and again, xn plus 1 is definitely going to be uh, smaller than the sum from k equals 1 to n plus 1 of xk, because this is adding k other non-negative terms. And now they've got the same denominator, I can just put them together, and I get the result for free. And the top, I've got the sum of the first n terms. I'm adding the oops, adding the n plus 1 term. So that's just going to come the sum, the sum from k equals 1 to n plus 1 of xk, like so. And that proves my lemma by induction. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So now to use the lemma, what I'm going to do is say let xk equal 1 over k to the s, then pretty clearly each of these terms are non-negative. OK, cool. Well, what do I get from the lemma? Then I get that the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k to the s over 1 plus 1 over k to the s is at least this sum here, the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k to the s over 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k to the s. OK, well, this left-hand side here, 1 over k to the s, um, I, if I multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by k to the s, this becomes the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over 1 plus k to the s, which is what we're interested in. And on the right-hand side, we're just going to keep it the same. 
I noticed that all of these are finite sums so far. I haven't yet taken um, in, an infinite sum. And that's what we're going to do now. Now that we basically have everything lined up nicely, all I'm going to do is take the limit as n goes to infinity on this side and the limit as n goes to infinity on that side. And a, a very nice use, uh, and every, a very nice uh, kind of lemma or theorem says that if you have xn is less than yn, then the limit as n goes to infinity of xn must be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of yn. And we're basically using that here. So it's the law, uh, uh, the, the law of weak inequalities. Um, cool. And now this thing here is precisely what we want in the limit as n goes to infinity. And this right-hand side here, well, we're precisely using the definition of zeta of s. So this will be zeta of s over 1 plus zeta of s.